This is Alpha Stocks on Dupuscopy TV, Dallas World Economic Forum, and two promising speakers today with us. Yeah, talking about uh, universities and enterprise exploring blockchain, the centralization is matters. And I, I also wanted to know what are the use cases because you, you onboarded a lot of clients in the cold, cold market and uh, how it was beneficial for them freezing. to onboard you. Oof. It was freezing cold. So give us a couple of stories yeah. about this. Crypto winter. I have already started in, in the industry since 2016, so I have gone through two crypto winters. I always believe that good projects and good ideas that never stop building, and they are always there in spite of the market conditions. So for Hedera particularly, during that time, it's, it's challenging, but our council members keep continue prototyping, continue learning. It's really an effort that we all have to come together to be able to make this dream a reality because all are here, I mean, in Davos, talking about blockchain, because we have a goal. We are seeing an goal for many different reasons, and we are collaborating to make this happen. So really for Hedera, it was a lot of effort and talking to the institutions, talking to the enterprises, trying to figure out what are the use cases, why they want to be part of Hedera, and how they can add value to the network. And through the process, we, um, they all joined. Actually, last year we announced it. Uh, we just announced it yesterday that Hitachi, Hitachi America is joined. What, what, what do you have announced yesterday? We have some hot topic here. What was that? Uh, that Hitachi America joined Heather, uh, the council member of Hedera. Congratulations. Thank like, you. Well We're done. excited. Honestly saying, I wanted to cover a bit macro, you know, I think like that here we are a little bit touched like the crypto enter and whether enterprise really do care because they have their own problems. Are they able really to integrate innovations and how their decisions are made in terms of like making that happen, making going, you know, blockchain is even more innovation than other innovations because sometimes it's hard to implement even very simple, uh, you know, instrument software because the integration process is so long. But like. Sandra, maybe could you can just elaborate a bit on, on how, you know, university was feeling during the crypto winter and whether it was ever affecting you. Well, absolutely not. But I think the, the bear market is not bad, actually, to really have a serious entrepreneur so that you take it really serious. So people who survived the crypto winter are really professional. So they are, if, if you are in a bull run, there are so many I'm sorry, still scammers depend just for the DLT market, but any, any kinds where, where the possibility is to really have this, this uh, hype cycle to tackle this. So for us, for the, the universities, of course, there is some problems exactly for the, for the enterprise uh, meanings, for the startups, the venture capital. If you want to really talk about Web3 and they say, oh, you're still talking about blockchain? I thought they're, they're dead already. But no, we are not that. This is really a ground laying infrastructure, which will be uh, in the maybe in the back layer. Maybe later on we won't talk about DLT. No one will talk. We just have this infrastructure built in in our protocols. Yeah, I think like the, the here uh, our listeners might be interested like how to enter the industry. But like let me a little bit circle back on the question about the difference of public ledger and private one. So. We, you have shifted from p private to public, but maybe you can cover a bit, like what is the difference from, from the perspective, you know, of, of let's say terminology and use cases. Like what, what is like, why people prefer, for instance, enterprise prefer to go with the private ledger, you know? I mean, talking about, for example, IBM Hyperledger Fabric, we had one of the largest um, private white label solution uh, blockchain uh, out there. I'm not sure if we need it. Maybe, okay, banks, um, I'm, I'm and not getting... people are using that. I was like, and yeah, people, I yeah. mean, enterprise and big tech, they, they like exactly. it. So exactly. So they trust it. Exactly. And this is just for their infrastructure. So we talked before uh, about banking. So why is it that you just can make your transactions between 9 to 5 and from Monday to Friday? And... If you do some cross-border payments, why is it like 10 days to, yeah, to, to get this one there? Or even more. This is horrifying. And if you take uh, blockchain, even if you take Bitcoin, you're about 10 minutes, maybe 50 minutes for evaluation of this transaction. So I think that the, the private blockchains are there for infrastructure solutions for big corporates, as you said. And public blockchains, I think this is really doing the... the 
the, 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 the mass adoption, the next, the next big thing. Big thing. Yeah. And because you talked about uh, the difference between blockchain and DLT, DLT is just, so blockchain is one type of DLT, distributed the, the leisure technology. We have other things like IOTA Stangle is a, is a DAG, directed acyclic graphs. Blockchain is one type of DLT, but okay, we have so different we types have of uh, okay, distributed done. leisure technologies. Done. Yeah, for example, DAG is one uh, directed acyclic graph from IOTA or from Casper. I think they're doing the same. Oh my God, we have, that's uh, so interesting. So, so it's, it's big. We might have the, the interview with big. Casper. Like, and I'm going to ask them what, like, what is the difference. It's interesting to hear their point of view. But uh, that's about, I have a question to you. Can I spend a little bit on yeah, that. Yeah, sure, because, sure. It's done. Uh, another yeah. thing that's happening is hybrid. Yeah. Hybrid approaches. And there are many, many blockchains and there are many approaches right now. But IBM is a council member of Hedera. So Hedera and Hyperledger, we work very close together. So that's when public with private, we come together and use a hybrid model. So in a way, you may remember, and I think that we have used this uh, example a lot, when we said many years ago, no one wanted to put the card, the Visa card or the credit card on internet. And now we all do it. We trust it. We trust it because it took years and the infrastructure was built. So we're still early on the infrastructure and we're still building trust as part of the industry. And that's why we have this hybrid, hybrid public. But don't you think that it's a little bit cheating? You know, like you were saying that we're building the decentralized world. But then, you know, the customers, enterprise, let's say, they remain in the private letters. So they don't go decentralization. So this adoption kind of on the high institutional grade is not happening. So what is like how to liberate that in the way so your community is not angry with you by saying, like, okay, so you divided V2B, V2G, and from us to B2C. Like, we want to be all together. We want to be united. We want to have interaction directly with each other, you know, no matter what size, you know, enterprise you are. I don't know what information you have, but I think the private blockchains are not that big, uh, have a big market share. It's really getting more public. I mean, the, the good thing about blockchain is that you don't need to trust people. This is a trustless layer you build out of this network, for example, out of this Hedera network. So the, the different nodes out there, for example, if you have a smart contract, there's the law, okay, this is what we want to tackle. And no one can make any shit out of it, if I may say <laughs> it. So you, you are not uh, uh, relying on intermediaries. And uh, so, so why not just make it public? So how to make enterprise engage with blockchain? Because like, I do want to see more institutionalized players on the market and to bring this trustworthy, credible relationship. So what do you see helps there to achieve that? Habit they and they habit? are building, they are building. And it starts with the internal use cases. They need to test, they need to trust it. So there is a lot of adoption. I mean, hopefully it's more over time, but those that are adopting, they are using it for trace and tracking, to reduce costs, to make operations efficiency. So it starts in let me understand it in-house first, and then I can start to put it outside. But another thing that is really important in terms of adoption is the infrastructure that, in from my corner as a CFO, where are the tools that we are building for other CFOs and treasurers? Like large institutions are public trading institutions, highly regulated. They need to report quickly, they need to be trusting the data, they cannot be mistakes. So we are still building that infrastructure, we're still building the plumbing to be able to get them. Regarding the use cases and utilities, so uh, HBAR is purely utility token, and could you tell us what is most unthinkable usage of your infrastructure among your clients, among your enterprises? Yes, Hedera is a, a general purpose layer one. So many, many visionaries, entrepreneurs build on top of it and as well, several enterprises are innovating as well. So we have, let's say there are many verticals and some of the verticals are from what I mentioned, track and trace, consumer engagement, on-chain finance, and we have also sustainability. We have a lot of sustainability in terms of how do you trace carbon emissions? How do you bring trust into the carbon market? And then we have sovereign identity. So the utility, I feel utility is a very important question to discuss because like number of layer ones, you know, first of all, every single person asking like why you're building again and again layer ones, why do we need so many? 
if we already have the infrastructure, why you don't unite? I believe that we have more than 1,000 L1, L0s and for infra players, and the utility is the most important question, like why and what what do you do there? Like, why do you need that? And everyone questioned the same problems, you know, they're trying to save the same problems. So this defragmented world is not really making you know, this sandbox more powerful and really compete with the Bitcoin, right? So what is the, the perfect picture for L1 to become in the next five to 10 years? And what will be the u utility in how to compare it and how to differentiate that? Maybe you can a little play around this, you know, these thoughts, like what do you think about it? Well, we like to see, and if I have magic wand, is interoperability. That's what blockchain is. When all the layers are the layer one, they connect with each other, they talk to each other and they protect each other. That really is when we completely connect the network. And eventually it may be some consolidation, but we have a lot, a lot of like general ledgers. We have a specific ledgers. There's a lot that they are trying to solve different problems. But over time, I mean, similar what happened in the late uh, 1990s where we have a lot of um, search engines. And now, who do you remember? Google is yeah, the one yeah. that you use. No? So there's gonna be over time some consolidation. There's gonna be some players that will remain some other players which is going to be absorbed. But what matters is really that there is this interoperability and that we build trust. How do you think about your feeling about mass adoption if the big enterprises will adopt it? Will it uh, really catalyze the process or it will be like, you know, in a big enterprise companies, it takes years and years and years to install and... Well, I to, hope to, to not. Put, yeah. I think that it's what, kind what, of what divided. What is your uh, outlook in second? I've been in for a while in blockchain and I really would love to see uh, an adoption. So what I think is going to be some enterprises, those that are already building, and most of us, the market doesn't know, but they're already building, they will go ahead and they will implement it in a way that no one, the consumer doesn't know. Like really the consumer doesn't need to know that you're on blockchain. The consumer doesn't need to know that it's a token. They just need to... Like in the case of someone check finance, you just need to click and send from here to here finances. Yeah, That's the case of Remit. Sander, how, how would you answer this question? So I would like to hear your opinion because I'm pretty sure that that will be different. No, I also think that we need uh, efficiency. The infrastructure, already talked about it, uh, will be for the banks, for the institutions. One thing, it's always about efficiency, cost reduction and so on. On the other hand, we need applications. So, okay, the first adoption was Bitcoin, ability to transfer money in a digital way without relying on anyone. This is really great. And uh, because you asked, why do we have so many layer ones from the university perspective, <laughs> I can answer the, the, the same thing. And maybe there will be some interoperability and it's good. But actually, as we are just want to, just want to make on these layers, on these blockchains, applications, new business models. We just take the ones uh, who are the best, who have the highest uh, transaction rate, cost efficient, and really, yeah, are secure. I have a question about the figures. Year to year growing rate is growing or about the, the uh, onboarding the clients? I mean, from one year to another, you're onboarding more and more clients, your funnel is growing or... It, it just became stable. Hedera is the layer one that has the most transactions on chain. We have over a thousand transactions per second, and we have the most applications already building, both enterprises and applications building already on Hedera. And the other reason why enterprises, and both of them enterprises and startups, are coming to Hedera. Know your client or not know your client? It depends, because we do know who is building on Hedera. We know the builders. There will be uh, uh, solutions that you don't need to know them, but the protocol knows. I can tell you that I'm very excited about some projects. I think that the project is about track and tracks, like really circular economy from where it comes to the consumer beyond. And I'm really excited about identity and the future of work because we know uh, there's a lot of conflicts in the world and being able to have an identity in terms of the universities, if the universities have everything on chain, it doesn't matter what part of the world you are, you take it with you. We hope that your work will lead to the mass adoption of the blockchain industry. Thank you. Thank you for having us.